Welcome to GUI and web browsers, connectivity, special interest groups, and friends. Uh, this is still weekly. Maybe we'll change that uh, call uh, for the 4th of, oh gosh, it's 8th and it's April already. Uh, <laughs> um, please add uh, any agenda items you want to discuss while you do that. I will share my screen. I believe my item is on the beginning of the list. So <laughs> let's get uh, it out of the way quickly. Um, so uh, there's a quick update about IPFS Companion. Um, a new stable version shipped. It has it's like not very eventful right now, but it will be when Go IPFS uh, 0.5 ships. So right now it looks mostly the same. Uh, there is just like a small, small improvement if you are on IPFS resource uh, and you want to copy it. There's a better label, label here. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, however, if you got Go IPFS 0.5. It not only works because it supports post only HTTP API, uh, it also has a full support for subdomain gateways. Uh, all gateways, all the public gateways, uh, the canonical one on the web link, but also any other gateway that follows the subdomain convention will be redirected to a subdomain gateway at a local host. And all CIDs, all will be converted to CADV1, all that jazz that I talked multiple times. Uh, uh, but that's, uh, that's the version of Companion, which is already accepted on both uh, Firefox uh, add-on store, and what's more important, on the Chromium Web Store. And that's probably the most interesting part of this announcement, because like, you can't play with this subdomain stuff if you uh, try the latest uh, RC1, I believe it shipped yesterday for Go IPFS 0.5, uh, it will roll out uh, with IPFS desktop as soon that uh, is shipped. But for now, uh, you just need to manually install it. However, what's interesting about this release is it got accepted into Chromium Web Store under three days. So I've been like tracking how long it takes from the moment I publish uh, our browser extension to the moment it's available. And recently there was a change. So you can see both betas were accepted under three days and our stable version was accepted under like within two days, which means probably uh, either uh, our extension is already marked as trusted or the new fields for uh, description of per uh, permission, which we had to fill up uh, recently and it was like a delay, caused another delay a few weeks back. Maybe that paid off and now we are on this fast lane. We'll see. I'll keep this issue open and we'll uh, track this uh, over the time. But why it's important? It's important in case there's a security issue of like, or like, Let's like knock on the wood, but like breaking changes happen. Uh, and we want to quickly roll out the fix to our users. If it takes a weeks, it's not a good experience. Uh, if it takes like one, two days, that's a bit better. Um, so that's the update on Companion. Uh, any questions around Companion before I move to the next one? Uh, thanks, thanks for pushing that out so fast and did that work over the weekend. I, I think it's really interesting feedback, like um, that this is a great argument for Mozilla's uh, automated auto review followed by later manual review is the security fire drill. And that, that's something where I feel like Chrome, Chrome hasn't been really responsive to complaints about long turnaround times there. Uh, that is not really a direct vector for input and communication there. We don't get a lot of feedback from them. Uh, this is, again, we've talked before about maybe publicly communicating the frustrations that we've had, some of the challenges. Uh, might, I, I don't know if we're quite there yet. Um, I'm going kind of aggro mode publicly on them about it. 
uh, it would be it would be interesting to see if other folks have done that and kind of what the response was. We also have some back channel communication mm -hmm. we can do there as well. But it's a, it's a real concern. The slow turnaround from a security perspective. Oh, there's a, a, a Google Groups uh, list for um, for browser extension developers, and it's pretty intense. Let me put it that way. Uh, and also, like Google, like themselves, they communicated recently, like two weeks ago, around the COVID nineteen situation. They proactively noted, sent a notice that there may be a week weeks long delay in publishing new extensions. So I think we are pretty lucky, given the fact that we already have an established presence, uh, and we probably are in the like fast lane. But if you are a new developer, it may take like months before your extension is available on the Chrome Web Store, which is pretty bad, but yeah. Um, yep, smoothly transitioning. Uh, I mentioned Go IPFS 0.5 is in the works. Uh, release candidate one uh, shipped recently, and I won't go into all, like, all the changes. Uh, however, I want to mention it here because it impacts our GUI applications and it impacts people who use it for web apps, for hosting their website and stuff like that. Um, so there's an uh, issue uh, about release preparation where you can uh, find uh, links and resources for uh, where to download uh, RC1, what, what are expected breaking changes or what are new features. However, uh, Something that uh, is important for people using it on the web is uh, ch the change on the HTTP API. Like it always was was an RPC uh, type uh, API uh, over HTTP. Uh, people often been confused why it's not following HTTP convention and stuff like that. And I believe we we were it was uh, our fault that we like accepted stuff like get post work the same uh it's right uh, the change that we shipped uh, in this release makes it much more uh strict to be an rpc it requires post um and that's a, a breaking change because a lot of people just use get because that's the default in many http libraries and there are http libraries for various languages uh, so what I did, I went over <laughs> every, well, every repo which we link from uh, our like main project entry point. Uh, there is a list of HTTP lib client libraries for different languages. And I went over them. Uh, I also like fixed links to some which like, changed URLs, changed uh, maintainers, um, and uh, gave a quick heads up to each uh, maintainer that to double check if uh, they are already using post, if not to make that change, some already uh, within a few hours uh, address that. But I hope uh, that will at least, if it breaks, if that change breaks someone's uh, uh, stack, they will at least be able to quickly find it. Even if the maintainer of the library did not uh, fix it, they will find the issue. Um, and I wanted to mention it here in case someone is watching this and <laughs> wondering why their app has stopped responding or start, started responding with a uh, 451 error method not supported. Um, so that's one uh, thing post only uh, HTTP API will land in GoIPFS 0.5. Try release candidate one if it works. And another thing is in on the specific on the JS land. Uh, we have a JS HTTP API library, which uh, everyone is using uh, from, from the JS. Uh, so if you don't want to embed JS IPFS on the page and you are running Go IPFS on the backend, you just use this library we have. Uh, so the good, good news is, like the problematic part is that we've made this huge refactor to async iterables a few weeks back. And not every web app uh, managed to fully migrate to this new uh, programmatic API in the JavaScript land. This is like specific uh, on the JS land. Um, 
So uh, I, made, made, I just wanted to make sure there's a patch release available for people who are still on the older version before we made that breaking change of programmatic interface. So if you are in that camp that you have an app which uh, will take some time to refactor to use those new JS APIs, uh, you don't need to worry, just use uh, this version. It will work fine. That's the version that uh, will be used by web UI. Uh, so it will be a safe bet uh, that it should work for you. Uh, and then move uh, to the new API at your own uh, convenience. Um, those are my like two quick uh, announcements uh, around Go IPFS release and IPFS companion release. Um, any questions around Go IPFS 0.5? <laughs> We, we we talked about maybe publishing a, a blog post specifically for some of these developer changes to be able to make sure that the things that developers the actions that that developers have to take are not lost in the in the parade of announcements and new features and things like that. Um, yes. How does this change other other extensions and things like that? Like um, like MetaMask, uh, some of the browser integrations that we've done. Uh, is there anything that we need to go, maybe go through a list of all the collabs even and uh, think about who needs to actually take proactive, make proactive changes? Please? Uh, yeah, so like uh, the good thing is that our release process of the Go IPFS itself, it has, let me quickly scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> uh, there is like a release checklist. And on that checklist, we've got uh, uh, internal testing. Uh, I believe we could check the desktop as well because I made yesterday I made sure it works. So that's a stage one internal testing. And then there's community dev testing and community prod testing. And we have an early testers program where I believe most of our collabs are already like members of this. Uh, so they got early notice. Uh, yeah, so here's the, the list. You can like sign up your app here. Uh, to be like proactively uh, in the loop uh, and uh, it's a proper checklist so we cannot move forward if uh, like community uh, like people from the program at least do not acknowledge they tested and if it's something breaks they identify the fix or so it's like a hard uh, blocker on the nice. process okay. uh, yeah Right, uh, this is a sort of like another item is also mine, uh, but it's a meta about this call. So you could see I had a question mark. Oh, wow, why is it like hiding? Yeah, so I got this question mark here. Uh, sh my proposal is to make it be weekly, uh, mostly to uh, give us more breathing room. Uh, I, I was also like considering making it shorter, but I feel there are interesting topics, but we probably could uh, do this every two weeks and probably uh, increase the, maybe like not quality, but like pick uh, more prominent changes, like less often, but maybe talk a bit longer about them. Um, how do you feel about making this call be weekly starting like now? So this would be, the next one would be in two weeks. How do we feel about this? Um, would it be better to do an hour every other week or a half an hour every week? Yeah, so uh, I personally, I don't feel any difference in the way my day is structured in the call if the call is half an hour or an hour it's always for me the similar spot on the week that i need to be like ready or think the about the act of doing the call is what is painful to you <laughs> okay got it cool no i don't yeah. mean even like uh, me as a person who uh, usually makes the call uh, and and uh, uh, leads it uh, it's mostly with every call, if I have a call which is 20 minutes or one hour in my mind, it's the same. <laughs> yeah, uh, fair enough, fair enough. So I, uh, I have no opinions either way. Just thought I'd bring that up 
as a possible alternative. And also, are, are we supposed to not be having meetings on Wednesdays now? Did yeah, so so I on the previous topic, I'm the same as Lytle. Like I feel like it occupies the same cognitive overhead for me, whether it's 30 minutes or an hour. It's about the like for me, it's a saving if we move to every two weeks. Um, but we could always try it out, see how it goes too. We guys get back to like just test it for a month or, or a quarter. If it feels like it's too long and we don't remember anything, then we can revert. For the Wednesdays, there is no official rollout of that program yet for Meeting Free Wednesdays. However, uh, I, I think it's very likely that it will be adopted and announced pretty soon. Uh, so there's no change required yet, especially as now we are every other Wednesday. But if that does happen, then we would definitely need to move this meeting. If we'd already been trying to avoid Friday meetings for folks who are, you know, in like EMEA places, would meeting free Thursdays maybe make more sense? Because then people are like guaranteed two blocks of time, or does that feel way too much like? Is, I, is that like I think they, I think they did it like an internal survey or something. I'm pretty okay. much like meeting free days that end in Y is what I'm trying to do generally. But I, I'm I'm with you on the on the Friday. Yeah. yeah. I think okay. maybe Wednesday was people's choice because you know, All right. the week up. All right. Yeah. I was just like, I heard this. I had a I had a one on one with someone earlier today. And I'm like, meeting free Wednesdays. I know not of this thing. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think there were some some internal messages in some of the teams, but okay. it's not a, right. it's not a full, it's not a real thing yet. So I okay. feel like we don't need to act on it until it's a real okay. thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So let's uh, let's try making this uh, like the next one in two weeks. If Turns out that takes two hours. <laughs> we'll, we'll reconsider. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, next one. Uh, clicks. Dietrich. Yeah. So Sam Macbeth, uh, developer at Clicks, who who did some of the early so where where Lytle hopped on to the IPFS on LibD Web around the same period of time when LibD Web started. Sam hopped on implementing that on top of LibD Web and recently just shipped it in the Clicks browser. Clicks browser is not just a browser, but it's like a suite of products uh, based in Germany. They are a privacy oriented organization that is, um, they received some funding from Mozilla in the past and it does some interesting things um, like different integrations with Firefox. Their browser is a fork of Firefox. Um, and so it kind of stands out and that there just really aren't a lot of those. Uh, and they're interested in, they saw what we did with Opera and are interested in talking about IPFS integration. I'm interested in talking with them for a couple of different reasons. I mean, the IPFS integration is, is interesting. I'd like to learn more about kind of what their longer term strategy and plans are, as well as they just launched a search engine. And uh, having more people looking at Web3 search is better. Uh, a lot of those people so far in those organizations seem to be pretty firmly rooted in the, in the crypto sphere and community. So I'm really interested in is to see if they're interested in, in poking at that from a privacy and more browser and media oriented uh, background since uh, they're owned by a large German media publishing company. Uh, so the, it, it, interesting things to poke at. I'll, I'll let this group know if there's any updates. Maybe we can even get Sam come by this meeting and give a demo and hang out and talk. Uh, I think that the next couple of things are on me as well. Um, uh, Jen introduced me to uh, somebody who had done work for Andyet back in the day and is a web RTC specialist. I can't remember, maybe also based in Germany. Everybody's from Germany, apparently. Philip Hinky. Yeah, Philip. And um, it's interesting. So I started a conversation with him around uh, web RTC ideas and, and opportunities. Uh, we, I know WebRTC is one of those things where we like, we poked a bit, we've done some tests, we're like, oh, the ceiling of performance and ceiling of connection counts is kind of problematic for us. Uh, but especially as we're looking at going more into mobile, uh, lowering the barriers to entry there. I'm interested in little BP configurations with, that are under a constrained connection counts and things like that. And can also have uh, more a swarm, swarm like behavior as opposed to persistent peers. As we get into things like peer store and things like that, these opportunities are a little bit more available to us. So looking further down the road, uh, if you have any ideas, Jacob, I saw your, your thoughts around distributed signaling. It's super interesting if you have other ideas of places where we could really poke at and lean on WebRTC, looking at what, what, meta, um, what WebTorrent has done, maybe looking at other approaches that people have taken to, to uh, hack WebRTC, as it were, and then also as things like uh, 
WebRTC over HTTP3 and Quake and things like that slowly start to emerge, be prepared for how we can take advantage of these better connection opportunities and how they're tuned for mobile and, and web usage more. But if you have ideas, throw them down there. I'd really be interested in how we can kind of uh, pre-flight some of this stuff by writing it up as dev grants, even if it's just research. Like, uh, at what point do we still have the same type of crash at six connections, you know, things like that in, in different browsers and which ones, even if it's just somebody doing a survey of connections and running a set of tests, finding out where the ceilings are, uh, and then sharing that with, with the broader web developer community is something that would be interested in funding, benefits us, benefits the whole ecosystem. Yeah, I think there's plenty of stuff we can look at because like we've already have some things earmarked for later this year in terms of like distributed signaling. And then at some point we'd like to do like distributed ice, like if we can combine that with Autonet. But I think like looking at like like you talked about even just general web RTC configuration for us, like what can we do? Like what should people be doing with their connection managers to like restrict web RCT, web RTC connections? And like what what can we build in that area? So I think even just syncing up with him, um, who's been doing WebRTC forever, in terms of like, hey, what, this is what we're kind of thinking. Like, what about that seems like a bad, terrible idea right now in the WebRTC space? And like, what reasonably could we do? And then like, let's look at like a proof of concept of that working and then potentially um, create a, a working draft spec from, from there for those things. And then any like lip to p roll up configuration from there. Yeah, that, that, those are great. I mean, any, any ideas, add them down there. I, I really like the idea too of, uh, of uh, building some relationships like this so we actually have voice back into the standardization process as well. So if somebody's involved in, in the development of the stack, uh, be able to get our, you know, we, we made some comments on WebRTC and the last year. Um, thanks for your help there and the P2P team drop, drop some thoughts in there. But having that ongoing and active presence would probably be the best in the long run as well. Uh, think, any, uh, just one question. Anyone knows the, st the status of uh, Quick Web RTC? I think it should be a cool thing also to have a proof of concept. I think it's still uh, the origin trial. I mean, uh, last time I checked, it was origin trial in Chromium. Yeah, I think it, that's still the case. Like, you can opt into it. But I, like, in reality, like, the quick, quick spec isn't even final yet. So, like, they're not really going to move forward on that. Uh, but the big thing, the biggest thing that we're going to get out of that is really like not having to implement so many different things because like, we don't have to run a turn server and a signaling server and an ice server. And all three of those are using like different techs, which is annoying. So being able to have everything just run quick under the hood will be nice. Um, and I think simplify a lot of things. But from a standardization, you know, like one of the things that happen as these standards are being developed is people are looking for use cases and, and people telling either success or failure stories. So something that might be worth doing from our standpoint is having having somebody like Philip actually build a proof of concept and run some benchmarks and say, look, for our use cases, lib P2P, we can get these improvements in connection speed, uh, bandwidth and throughput. Uh, and if there's anything we can benchmark even around power consumption on mobile device, like any of those types of stories are what really can, can move something, like either get it over the hump from a standardization perspective, uh, really push on in implementations for a specific vendors as well. So it, I, I really, the, the spectrum of different projects there, I think is pretty broad. And, and I'd, I'd be interested in funding and supporting any one of these little pieces. And especially the distributed ice is something that like, there's really a lot of goodwill in the community, I think, from innovation in that space. It's one of the biggest one of the biggest uh, complaints that you see. Uh, this next bit is me as well. Um, so Opera launched last week. Uh, before that, I connected with the Infra team to make sure that we were logging what was coming in off dweb.link, so we have a view into that. Uh, the Kibana is behind a PL account, so that's not open to public right now. Uh, but if anybody has familiarity with, with any of these numbers, it's kind of interesting. Like we saw a huge spike, obviously, when Opera went up. Um, but then I think there might be a metrics collection issue because shortly after a three, four day spike around the launch, the numbers uh, are actually lower than they were prior to the launch, like drastically lower. So I, I, I need to poke in front and see what's, what's happening there. But I just thought I'd float this across the, the group here in case you had any familiarity with working with this stuff before. 
Uh, but the, no news other than for there, there appeared to be a very large jump in traffic due to the upper launch uh, for four consecutive days until it dropped off to levels way below pre-launch. Uh, numbers. Uh, the only other notice I had after that too is the Agave proposal. Thanks Lytle for the uh, really deep and, and um, uh, careful inspection of that proposal and working with them to be able to uh, figure out what the right set of initial work there is to land a protocol handler in Chromium. The uh, proposal looks pretty much good right now. So I think over the next few weeks, we'll be able to hopefully sign papers and get work kicked off. Yeah, that's just uh, this next one's you. Oh, sorry. Uh, what? <laughs> the delay is real. Uh, yeah, totally, Jessica. I believe. No, it's oh, yeah. I mean, and this is super quick. We can talk about this like next time we meet. Um, there is, I, I have been taking, there are now 13 repos in this like um, grand unified Zen Hub board of um, things that have front ends to them. We'll just put it that way. Um, which I am using as a ground for um, weeding out the issues that have some sort of UX implication to them and then eventually prioritizing them and um, uh, lining them up hopefully for additional development. So, um, oh, thanks, Lido. Um, so there's not like a whole lot there of value at the moment. I've just been, I, I have down that, that new issues. Those 31 are the ones that I still need to at least uh, label and groom, but these are using our standard label sets. Um, there's 17 things that are icebox just because they're too big or they're like too next generation. Um, there's these 62 issues for further prioritization uh, that I need to take another look at and see if we can figure out how to get those in some sort of interesting priority order. Uh, the 11 issues in progress do include some things that have probably been abandoned, including some contributing con community contributions. Jeez, words are hard. Um, so that's, um, but then some of it is stuff that all y'all did and then like kind of forgot about. So I might be um, checking in with you on that. Um, this represents a whole lot of consolidating very similar issues or closing things that aren't valid anymore or things that are just like five years stale. So um, it's been taking like a rather painfully long time, uh, but we're starting to wrap our heads around that, which is great. Um, what I'm hoping this is going to be doing for us is giving us some sort of unified approach to, you know, it's like, here's something that's going to manifest itself in two different products. Um, usually two different products are companion and some other thing. So um, like I said, there's not like a whole lot of cool stuff to look at at this point right now, but watch this space um, for things that involve UX changes. I plan on using this as sort of the master holding pen. So um, I, I, I hope we shall be getting to know this board better in the future. If um, you've probably also been getting like GitHub notifications about me like dicking around in your issues. So you probably already knew this was happening. Um, if anything, you know, if, if, if anything that I'm doing looks or feels weird or wrong or fishy to you, just hit me up. Um, I've been pretty cavalier about this just because there's a lot of really old stale stuff in there. And um, so I, I have been taking the do now get forgiveness later um, perspective on things. So please don't be offended if I did something insensitive in, in your pet issue that you haven't thought about in two and a half years. <laughs> so, so yeah, watch this space. Um, it's sort of a no new situation, but just want to let you know what I have been working on. This is super useful work. I yep. already, within, even within the companion repo, I, I really appreciate consolidation because you've seen like we had the similar thing approach from multiple angles and we had like three issues which went into different directions. So I really appreciate you even like pick the one which looked more, most sane or more, least out of date. So it's uh, there's a like tremendous amount of work. Yeah, that, I'm looking. I'm looking right. forward to going through the the like <laughs> the second tier prioritization exercise. And like that said, I mean, I can be making decisions 
from a UX point of view as to what I feel is going to generate the most value to the user. Um, I'll probably start with an initial bash from that perspective, but probably we should in the next couple of weeks maybe block out just like some working session time to kind of go through and talk about some issues together. We could do it async. Totally, we could do it async. It might be more efficient to do it all in one room at the same time. So let that rattle around in your head. We can go from there. Yeah, totally. I'm up for, uh, I'm up for multiple sessions. Uh, it's super useful, especially that we may get like full-time maintainer for desktop, uh, web UI, and like organizing existing Lightscape a little bit better it would be super useful even like for onboarding process and then for that person to see how interlinked our I mean, <laughs> our yeah. like, suit of yeah. apps is. And I mean, like, I know that I know that we get a little bit touchy about approaching things as products, but if we do have anything as close to, you know, a product suite, like this is it. And this gives us a good opportunity to test ground stuff. Well, test ground is, is a term of art here, but to try out uh, methodologies that we might be able to scale to other areas of the org. So yeah, let's let's have fun playing with this while we have the space to do so. This is cool. this is hugely helpful just from the point of view of onboarding new people coming in to work on the on the project. Yeah, Super and amazing. And this is something else. Um, yeah, I don't want to go down this road quite yet because we need to talk about you know like the financial mechanics behind all of this. Um, but once we do another round of prioritization on the UX facing stuff, um, there are a lot of issues in there that I think if you were just like a really good Node developer or or just just a decent JavaScript person anyway, and knew a little bit or cared a little bit about the D-Web. There's a lot of stuff here that would just be like fun projects. We are living in a space where a lot of people are trapped at home for the foreseeable future and in need of small amounts of extra cash. So um, I'm hoping to throw some bounties on this. Um, if anyone from the outside world is watching this call, don't get too excited just yet. But um, is, is if, if I have any say in this, I would like this to happen soon. We just need to get some of this sort of figured out in the back end and, and okayed for throwing some cash at it first. Uh, what about Brave? What, what about Brave? What, what even? <laughs> uh, just wanted to shout across the bow with this, with this group as well. Uh, Lionel and I have been talking about leaning a little bit more into different types of Brave integrations. Uh, the Gal Galio work is going to kind of set the stage for longer term periods of integration there. And, and Brave is really interested in shipping that work early. So from a point of view of, of our core Chromium work and resulting in a shipping vehicle actually built on top of Chromium, Brave's probably going to be early, if not first, to be able to do that. Uh, but we're also really interested in what we've learned from the embedded node experiments so far. How can we push on those experiments a little bit differently? Uh, with the announcement that the Chrome OS APIs that we use for socket superpowers there are going to be deprecated. Uh, it's, it's, it's really kind of forced our hand to be, seriously look at what other types of embeddings would be and what type of bundlings. So we're looking more at embedding Go IPFS with Brave. Uh, they're, they're, you know, have a history of being really open about those types of, of bundlings with Tor and things like that. Um, so just wanted to get you know socialize the idea and then for the for people that are following along in these meetings and for this group that there might be some more activity there it's interesting too because a lot of the work that we've done so far with browsers has been around javascript and this is the first time we would be looking at okay what what would a what would a bundling look like of maybe go ipfs uh but also using that as a as an experiment and a learning platform to be able to figure out what other types of bundling like either WebAssembly or uh, REST IPFS later on down the road are going to look like. Uh, what would a native Chromium bundling looks like? Look like? How would you, how do we embed either a bundle or a daemon or a library? Uh, things like that. There's a lot of open questions about what that might look like. And there are, there are a bunch of parties that are kind of curious uh, about, about this. So um, hopefully more news soon, but just letting folks know that we're talking more seriously about what a probably second half of 2020 initiative would look like to do that. Yeah, totally. And just to highlight, uh, Go IPFS 0.5, really cool release. It will ship some stuff relevant to bundling Go IPFS 
let's say if we want to bundle it with Brave, uh, the HTTP proxy mode, which was part of this PR, would be super useful uh, because that what they do with Tor, uh, Tor is exposing the SOX5 uh, proxy. Uh, so this would be like not one-to-one, -one, but very similar approach and a lot of uh, code and architecture already present and created for Tor could be reused. Um, so stay tuned, I guess. Um, we are at the end of the agenda. If there are any topics, uh, now would be a good time to add them. In the meantime, I will go over highlights, which I've added. <laughs> so there, there are releases. Not always we have releases, but this week. <laughs> uh, so uh, in, I already mentioned it, but in IPFS Companion has a beta and stable channel. And uh, beta is kind of stable, but it's experiment. It's it's not something we push to everyone. So before we push something to stable, we push it to beta. Um, so we had uh, beta releases to iterate on top of subdomains and other fixes. Um, and we had a stable release here. Uh, something I did not mention before is that we temporarily disabled window IPFS injection until JS API in IPFS companion is updated to the latest JS API. The problem was that uh, Companion was injecting the old API and there were no programmatic way for people to figure out what API they will get. They would have to get the API, check if it's fine, and if not, throw it away and try it again, which was like very ridiculous. And people did not use window IPFS that way. So the good thing is like window IPFS is not something people expect to be present at all times. It's like opportunistic thing that web apps check. If there's window IPFS, let's use that because that's probably backed by Go IPFS, it's faster. Uh, however, if it's not present, a lot of apps will either spawn HTTP client and use uh, API on the backend or uh, will uh, spawn uh, embedded JS IPFS. Uh, that's just a quick shout out that for now, window IPFS is suspended. Probably will re-enable it in the next release. Uh, I also like updated uh, docs in case someone stumbles upon it. <laughs> uh, and we have a tracking issue for this migration uh, to the new API. I will repurpose this issue filled by Alan, uh, the same API in JS uh, IPFS and JS A IPFS HTTP client. So it's a good place to track that. And uh, as a part of preparation for Go IPFS 0.5, I released a new version of Windows. Uh, oh, Windows, my gosh, where's my mind? I did not release Windows. I did release uh, IPFS Web UI. Uh, so it's a small patch release. Uh, mainly it has the fix for the post on the HTTP API. However, there are new translations for Italian, Japanese, Russian, and maybe something, some more. I, pro I often like miss something. Uh, and also synchronized all existing ones. So once again, I wanted to thank uh, to everyone who's uh, translating. Same for Companion. There's always a link somewhere, which I missed this time. No, this is a better release. What I'm, what I'm saying is here in on their features there's a link how can i add improved translations uh, which uh, will point you at our uh, translation project with some steps uh, you need to apply uh, like ask for being uh, let into a translation team at transifex but that's just formality uh, we like, usually accept folks and once a quarter or half a year we do a purge <laughs> of inactive folks because we are open source project and there's a limited number of uh, translators that we have in our uh, plan uh, but it's usually not a problem uh, i thought i mentioned it so back to the uh, web ui it has a cool cid v1 and that's uh, the version that will be used by uh, go ipfs uh, that's it that's all about releases from this week. Hopefully we'll get uh, GoIPFS 0.5 soon. 
Um, anything left, folks? Anything you want to discuss? Yeah. I had one more meeting meta point. There was a uh, internal PL survey sent out about things like meeting productivity and things like this, and re related to like the how the cadence that we have these and the length of these meetings. Uh, I just want to get a feel for people whether this meeting was working for them. Like, do you feel like you're learning new things? That you're looking about the right things? Uh, does it have the round the room status feel, or does it feel too like there's not a predictable enough agenda? Thoughts. I I appreciate this meeting because it gives me a chance to overhear from the people who are creating the things information about stuff that I may not otherwise receive that other than you know like release notices. So I do find this useful. I agree and I think bi-weekly will be better cuz then I'll usually have stuff in two weeks. One week is a bit tight. Yeah, I also agree that it's quite useful to get insights of a lot of stuff that is discussed in these meetings. And two weeks, I think it will be the perfect spot. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> that the bi weekly may, may work just fine. We'll see. Uh, time okay, they, thanks all. Like, there's some meetings are highly structured, and there's all these headings of things that you fill in, and other ones like this, it's just a, a blank canvas every, every time. And in some meetings, I feel the, the structured agenda really works well. And some meetings, I feel like the complete open agenda works well. Like there's not, there's not one rule that works for all, all meeting agenda styles. I really appreciate the open canvas one style that this meeting has. I always feel like it's, it keeps things interesting. I don't know that we hit the right things every time, but we probably do eventually. Uh, and, then, and, and I feel like the important things are raised. And then I feel like the other meetings where there's two structured agenda, People feel like they have to fill in the headers sometimes in the, in the structured agenda. So stuff that maybe isn't uh, super important ends up being gone, gone through. I don't, there's no you know, silver bullet, no perfect balance there, but I, I do appreciate the openness of this one. Uh, just the, like looking back, there's a playlist of all the historical GUI in, in web browsers calls. And you could see how this call kind of evolved. Because right now, uh, how it looks like right now it's a bit different than it was before and it changed multiple times at one point it was a sort of like a demo time for when we had a gui working group it was a place for uh gui working group members to showcase uh stuff and it really worked on youtube because it was like probably the only th visual thing around ipfs project which you could show to people <laughs> and it was something else than the code uh but it evolves over t uh, all the time, and uh, I'm pretty happy that we'll experiment with B weekly. Um, also, like the oof, interesting experience for me was uh, f meeting folks at IPFS camp, and like people actually watch this. Like not a lot of people, but people who are very passionate and that are building. They said that uh, it was actually like very. Uh, like like they watched uh, the IPFS weekly one when we have uh, external speakers and like one topic, and this that this one was uh, like a second one which they always try to watch or at least read uh, meeting notes to be in the loop what's happening across the project mostly bef because the GUI applications like Companion and all the stuff is built on top of libraries, and if pe other people are building on top of libraries, usually. On this, uh, the problems surface on this call first, so it's acted as a like an early warning system if there's like a breaking change or there's like a new interesting API opportunity. Um, so I hope it will serve the purpose. All right, folks. Um, I think that's it. See you in two weeks. See you same time. Two so weeks. Long. <laughs>